It's the biggest dam removal in the history of the world. It's the largest restoration project that I will likely see in my lifetime and most people will likely see in their lifetime. My name is George Pess and I work at the Northwest Fisheries Science Center for NOAA Fisheries. We've been monitoring different elements of the ecosystem in the, in the floodplain channels. But, uh... Five years ago, you know, when we had just the genesis of some monitoring plans and no resources, I was fearful that we'd be able to answer even the most basic questions about how the ecosystem or even how the fish populations are going to respond. Today, I feel much, much better about that. What? No, he's just joking. Uh -oh. I'm just joking. Yeah. <laughs> Snorkel surveys are when somebody gets in the water and they will methodically go upstream in the creek or river looking for fish and then counting the number of fish and identifying the species and identifying the size of the fish as they're moving progressively upstream to get an idea of what the abundance levels are of fish in a given section of river. We'll be able to say with some confidence that the, the number of fish in, in this channel might be somewhere between 10 to 100 depending on the year and depending on the condition. So if we see a real change, in other words, it goes from anywhere from 100 to 1,000, that'll allow us to say, yeah, that was due perhaps to the dam removal and not some kind of other effect that's going on here. Well, let's go ahead and get set up. I think there's some fish in there we can start doing. What Sarah's so focusing on is how the food web is actually going to change in the Elwha River. The diet of fish, aquatic bugs, or invertebrates. And she was getting an understanding of what the baseline conditions are now and what the fish are actually eating. A couple of people are going to do some electrofishing, which is a pretty standard method in uh, stream ecology, where we send an electrical current in the water, just enough to stun fish temporarily. We'll be able to scoop them up and then we'll be able to collect some information from them. So we're going to anesthetize them, and the first thing we'll do is we'll record their fork length, and then we're going to measure their weight so we have an idea of their size class. And what we'll do is we'll gently put some water, using the syringe and the blunted tip on the feeding needle, we'll put some water into their belly, which will flush out the contents of their stomach. And we collect that on a very fine mesh sieve so that we don't lose any really small little body parts. The exciting part is when we get to analyze all the data and look for interesting patterns. We've seen a lot of dams go up in our parents' and our grandparents' lifetimes. Even in our lifetimes, there's still new dams being put up. And we know that those have a lot of deleterious effects on river systems. But it's really exciting to watch something in the opposite direction, to see potentially how a river might recover and restore itself after a dam is removed. And we don't really get an opportunity to do that very often, certainly not on the magnitude of this scale. You know, one dam's about 100 feet, the other's about 200 feet. They're really large dam. The other thing that makes this unique is that the areas that we're opening up is predominantly in National Park. So it hasn't been tampered with, if you will, hasn't been altered. So a lot of the habitat that was there 100 years ago is still here today. No, you're doing great. Keep it up. Well, this is cool. Keep yeah. it cool. Certainly the potential of this river is very high with uh, all that pristine habitat up there. It's of national significance. I think that will really help inform potential future dam removal. There's already a number of other high head dams that are slated to be removed across the country, so there's a lot to be learned from this. Then you turn it on and draw it out. You shocked up a worm. Did I shock up a worm? We, we would like to be able to monitor for long term. The longer you're able to monitor something of this magnitude, the more you'll actually learn because we're not going to learn everything in the first five or ten years even. It might take you know 50 years to truly learn about what kinds of real changes have occurred over time. The more I study things like this, the more I realize that nature has a really good way of recovering itself if given the opportunity.